saying we've not uh, have, we don't have uh, agreement from the uh, Greek authorities on these papers. They will reflect on their own position later on. I would first like to ask um, the three institutions, the Commission, the ECB, the IMF, to uh, reflect on the uh, position we have arrived at, comment uh, or uh, explain the documents, uh, and in a second round we will look at the process uh, going ahead. First, I think we will welcome uh, some explanation on where we stand and what the documents are, what their status is. Uh, and I will start with giving the as well. set of inputs has been delivered to your group via documents presented to you. Uh, let me explain briefly what's in there. Uh, a copy of the memoir was agreed following this morning's meeting of institutions. The list of prior actions, which is part of the agreement, which should be incorporated, but uh, many should say what is agreed and what is not. Imagine a pre structural benchmark and 
expected milestones, uh, a document on financing for considerations of a possible uh, forward-looking schedule to account for uh, where we are today, and uh, finally a debt sustainability analysis. Uh, what the institution that proposes a truly believe balanced package, growth only, uh, socially fair, uh, offering a long-term perspective too, uh, it, it matches this with fiscal stability and sustainability, uh, which is the other necessary side of, of achieving the balance. Um, as I said, the last days of our meetings have not been in vain, uh, though I know we are all frustrated. Uh, we have agreed on, on a series of important elements, uh, fiscal targets, uh, uh, reform of the VAT system, uh, closing possibilities for income tax avoidance, reform of the income tax code, many other points that are now in front of you. Uh, it is understood that nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. But these elements uh, should not be discounted either. Uh, in these next few hours, we must now focus on the remaining gaps. There are few, there are few tools. We can solve them with the willingness also from the Greek side. This mentioned, let me just want to go. There are two parts of which we discuss a lot hours and hours, which are still table, which are VAT and pensions. Thank you. Let me just uh, add to that that the depth sustainability analysis document that you have is preliminary has been drafted by the two European institutions because the requirements and standards that the IMF will need for a final uh, depth sustainability analysis are uh, much more extensive, uh, elaborate. Uh, so the IMF uh, will, before it can go to its board, if there is ground to go to its board, have a, uh, uh, a different, more extensive DSA. So this is preliminary drafted by the two European institutions for that reason. Uh, just to be precise. That brings me to Mario. I have nothing, nothing to add to this. Thank you. <laughs> then I will turn to Christine. Thank you very much, Jeroen. But Mario's comment was so short that I'm sure I can be associated with it. And I totally echo his point. Uh, it's nice to still have a, a smile on our face after those hours and hours of um, very complicated, laborious, and uh, fairly unfocused uh, discussions. I just would like to mention that um, the three institutions have worked together cohesively uh, for quite a few weeks. Um, the Ed Memoir, which I know you have now in front of you, represents maximum flexibility that could be applied to the February memorandum. I insist on the maximum flexibility. And the prior action list that you have also in front of you, the one that we said, uh, actually rolls mm? out mm? in practical terms the prior actions that would be needed in order to um, respond to the ad memoir uh, provisions. Despite this uh, really cohesive work, uh, it's not been able to um, reach any kind of agreement really with our Greek uh, colleagues. Um, as I said, we have substantive differences. The process has been uh, I'm trying to put it nicely, yeah. I think, I guess, very unpleasant for all of us uh, with documents put on the table at the last minute and so on and so forth. Um, I think I'll say no more than that, and I just want to also echo and, con and concur with the comments made by uh, Jeroen concerning the uh, DSA that the IMF would uh, use and put on the table of its board in order for it to disperse. Uh, the document that you have in front of you is produced by the two institutions with our input and represents uh, a, a preliminary assessment uh, with the scenario that we regard as our baseline and which is called the adverse scenario. We need to be further developed, uh, as you can imagine, under our principles and submitted to the board. Thank you. Thank you. I want to, to Yannis to hear his reception of where we are. Thank you, Jeroen.
as uh, everyone knows, uh, this, is a, this has been a very laborious process. It has been uh, variously um, difficult and sometimes uh, unpleasant. I have to concur on this. But the unpleasantness should not um, deter us from uh, looking at what we have achieved. If you compare the two documents, the document that is in front of you by the institutions and our document, you will find that they are very close. I believe that, especially if you take into consideration where we started from and you compare it where, with where we are, convergence is the only word that comes to mind. We have converged on primary balance uh, targets uh, for the near and medium term. We have uh, exactly the same fiscal baseline scenarios after quite a lot of deliberation on this for 2015 and 2016. As a result of this coincidence of primary balances and the fiscal baseline scenario, uh, we have um, convergence, complete convergence on uh, our estimates of fiscal gaps for 2015 and 2016. There have been a multitude of uh, agreements, uh, most recently, it was uh, recommended to us that we should uh, introduce a tax on shipping and ship owners in Greece, something that previous governments would never have done. Uh, we were grateful to the institutions for having made that suggestion. It strengthened us and we have adopted it. So this is just one example of last minute convergence. Uh, our government has, um, on the two sticking issues, picking up the point that uh, Pierre made about the two major issues that consumed countless hours of deliberations and negotiations, uh, VAT reform on the one hand and pensions on the other. We have proposed uh, a major VAT reform, VAT reform. Uh, the estimated yield from that reform uh, comes to 1.7 billion a year or almost 1%, 0.93% of GDP. <clears throat> we are proposing to um, have a, a low rate of 6% just for pharmaceuticals, books, and theatrical performances. We have a tradition in Greece of subsidizing the theater. Um, a mid-level rate, 13%, which is where most of food goes, uh, energy, uh, utilities, I should say, more generally, and uh, hotels, which, as you can imagine, in Greece are a very important part of the economy. And then to 23%, to, to, to which is the top rate, we put everything else. It took a long time for uh, the, our technical teams to devise a model that we could use as a common model by which to estimate the impact of different tax rates upon um, our uh, VAT take. And this is a considered, I consider this to be a successful endeavor on the part of the institutions and us of establishing this common ground, uh, in t at least in terms of the analysis. Uh, the institutions uh, requested um, that we, we should get a little bit more than 0 0.93. They requested 1% of GDP in extra VAT, we're very close to this. The point I want to make at, uh, regarding VAT, and I think that this is a point that colleagues uh, will take well, it is meant well, is that one of the great problems we have in Greece is um, collectability. Our collectability rates are very low. We've had a very uh, bad track record on this, and this is where we would want, and this is where we want, and aim at focusing our efforts in order to increase our VAT take. As you all know, when you are attempting to increase collectability, increasing tax rates and pushing whole categories of goods and services onto the higher tax rate is not helpful. So there is a question here of whether 
the emphasis of reform should be on changing the tax rates, harmonizing the tax rates, or actually on the tax collection system itself. We believe that it is the latter which will bring in much greater revenues than the, those estimated, but we did not agree with institutions on how to compute, to calculate, to estimate the improvements that different reforms in the tax administration system would have. Um, on uh, the pension system, the institutions demanded uh, a 1% of GDP improvement in the fiscal impact of our pension system. We have delivered that. We've delivered it in a way which differs from that, was, that which was proposed by the institutions. So we are increasing contributions to the pension system together with the drastic elimination of early retirements. The institutions would prefer reductions in the actual pensions rather than increases in contribution. Uh, we are also proposing, and that is quite significant, uh, to, our gov to our government, to our parliament, we are ready to propose to our parliament uh, that the institution's uh, suggestion that we harmonize contributions between the different funds, in particular between the private sector and the public sector funds, goes ahead at the cost of public sector employees who will have to increase their contributions. Um, product markets, some product markets, product market reforms we have agreed upon, Others, we maintain differences. Let me say, colleagues, at this stage, I don't intend to speak for very long, Jeroen, but I think it is important to mention that this government has shifted a great deal. On almost every front, we've crossed what we considered originally to be our red lines. What we are asking for as you can see from or hear from what I just said, was a degree of policy space. Christine referred to maximum flexibility. We don't see that the institutions have applied maximum flexibility. We have applied a lot more flexibility. We've bent over backwards effectively in order to come closer or very close to the institution's position. I believe that uh, in, both in the case of Ireland and the case of Portugal, the institution showed a great deal more flexibility than um, in what we have experienced over the last few days. And let me just finish by <coughs> focusing on perhaps the most significant aspect of our disagreement, of the reason why we have not achieved complete convergence yet. The list of prior actions that we are presenting to you in the document that you have in front of you is a very difficult set of reforms for us. <laughs> it will be very hard for us politically in an economy which is experiencing seven years of unending, non-stop, contraction of nominal GDP to introduce measures of 2.5% of GDP and parametric ones. On top of that, other non-parametric ones. There is no doubt that especially in view of the uh, dysfunctionality of our banking system as they are overladen by NPLs. That these prior actions are certainly going to be recessionary. We tried to make them redistributive in a way that is closer to our program. Our program did not envisage such recessionary measures. We accepted them. We accepted them to the full magnitude that was requested of us. But we have slanted them in a manner which is redistributed redistributive um, in uh, harmony with uh, our political priorities. We are prepared to take such an SLA, such a set of prior actions through Parliament and do it efficiently and quickly. But we are going to face a great deal of discontent, not only from our own government members of Parliament, but throughout the Parliament. House. And the question that we will be asked as ministers in Parliament is, you want to ask to pass these prior actions. These are difficult ones for a, an economy in the recession. What are you offering us? Do you envisage that as part of this agreement there is clear sight of an escape 
from the debt deflationary cycle. That, that, that we can say that Greece in the next few months can look forward to coming out of the woods, so to speak, of the crisis. The problem, colleagues, is that, as you, many of you said yesterday in this very room, that this is a set of prior actions that is the foundation for an extension of the program by a few months, let's say until the end of the year, which of course means in the mind of any rational investor that they will think, okay, so another set of negotiations is going to, become in, to, 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 to kick in in November, another set of headlines full of uncertainty and full of uh, concerns about Grexit and about this and that, I submitted to you, colleagues, that this kind of extension is simply going to, after a few days of buoyancy in the markets as a result of having um, come to an agreement, very, very soon after that, investors are going to be in suspended animation. They are going to be waiting to see what happens towards the end of the extension. An economy which is already in a recession and introduces these heavily recessionary measures, because let's face it, two and a half percent, what, however we distribute it within the Greek social economy, they are going to be recessionary. Without having a clear view ahead, with these bumpy repayments of the SMB bonds as they are approaching, without any um, serious discussion of our proposal, which involves absolutely no new money for Greece. You, many colleagues mentioned here, no new money for Greece. We did not suggest new money for Greece. We suggested an operation involving the ESM, which is perfectly legal, which we could agree to it now, uh, in such a way as to smoothen out the repayment schedule, the bumpy, lumpy S&P repayments over the next year or two, which is the time during which this economy has to achieve escape velocity so that you and I do not come back here at the end of December with another set of conditionalities, another round of negotiations, another set of meetings perhaps, to go again to our parliaments, again to face political pressure both in Greece and in your own polity. <laughs> our hope was that we would be able to agree on prior actions that would be hard for us, but which unleash us from the shackles of this never-ending cycle of debt deflation. But, even at this late, late stage, I'm conveying to you our government's determination to reach the common ground which we set out to reach on the 20th of February, as per the communique. I believe that any impartial spectator or <laughs> observer looking at the two documents, will come to the safe conclusion that we don't have the right, as a Eurogroup, not to reach an agreement today. Thank you. Thank you, Janis. Um, there are a number of issues to which I think uh, the institutions may want to react later on. But perhaps we should give the floor to the ministers first. Wolfgang. I think so. I'm a little bit worried. <clears throat> because uh, the papers we get now are not in line, which uh, this is summarized. You gave yesterday in our Euro Committee. You, you summarized yesterday. Stay in line with the MOU and the statement of the 20th of February. No fresh money, no third program, disbursement by the IMF in parallel. And therefore, I have to say, with much respect, I'm very thankful to the EU's program. The main work they have delivered. Flexibility in this proposal of the financing needs and that's the analysis as a little bit too high. We 
changes of the MOU if we would follow these two papers. And I would have to ask for any of these major changes to accept it, John Powell. Do you really imagine that that would work? Therefore, I would strongly argue and ask for it. It's in the statement of the 20th of February, no more. We are by far a 
young and it's a February. No fresh money, no sale problem. Thank you, uh, Jerome. Uh, I'm going to make uh, just uh, a, general, a general comment. Uh, I think that it uh, doesn't make too much sense uh, to enter into the discussion of concrete measures because I think that we are not there. But I think that we have a real problem. We have a real problem because on the one side we have a political indication that was produced uh, last uh, Monday uh, to do whatever it takes in order to reach an agreement. And uh, we have created the expectation that, uh, uh, you know, is uh, going to be, you know, is, uh, you know, the political agreement is going to have the upper hand uh, in the discussions. That, uh, well, uh, you know, and I can share, you know, this view that is uh, of paramount importance to maintain uh, Greece in the Eurozone and that we have to reach an agreement before the deadline that we have set, that is the end of this month. So that's the general perception in the marketplace and uh, in any comment. If you, I don't know if you have uh, heard uh, you know, different analysis and different uh, research over the last days, but uh, everybody say, no, at the end of the day, you know, the political agreement is going to prevail. But on the other hand, on the other hand, well, I'm taking into consideration the different red lines that I am not going to, 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 to assess uh, in detail, well, we have, uh, we have seen that the technical, the technical analysis does not add up. That uh, taking into consideration <coughs> the red lines of, uh, of, uh, of Giannis, of the IMF, of, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the DSA, the, the, the financing gaps, uh, that, uh, you know, we are not going to be able to reach a technical, a technical agreement. I think that this is a very dangerous situation, a very dangerous situation. And I think that, uh, well, we have to know, we have to decide what, uh, you know, what part uh, of the discussion of this dilemma is going to prevail at the end of the day. Otherwise, otherwise, I think that we are going to continue in a sort of stalemate situation. We are going to dent 
and to impair the credibility of the Eurogroup, and we are not going to, 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 to be able to find a viable solution both for Greece and for us. des choses dans le temps. Qu'est-ce qui doit être fait tout de suite pour redonner de la confiance à tous et nous permettre de travailler sur d'autres sujets qui euh, devront être examinés euh, à l'automne, dans 5 mois, dans 6 mois, dans 9 mois, nous verrons. Mais c'est que du côté grec, je dis, et réaliste, nous ayons aujourd'hui quelque chose de précis, de concret, et qui soit très proche 
de ce qui a été proposé par les institutions. Tout ça est toujours compliqué, tout ça est toujours difficile. Il y a à chaque fois, derrière chaque ligne, il y a une question politique, à chaque fois il y a des votes qui ont risqué de manquer, à chaque fois il y a des vraies difficultés. Mais c'est cela dont nous avons aujourd'hui besoin pour nous permettre d'avancer. Et d'avancer en tenant compte de l'ensemble des autres éléments. Il y a, je disais, cinq paquets, quatre paquets sur la table. Là, c'est un mémorandum global, parce qu'il est proposé. L'autre, ce sont les actions préliminaires. Ça, c'est tout de suite. Il y a un paquet sur le financement. Il y a un paquet sur la toute activité de la dette. Ça, c'est plus tard. Si on veut avancer sur tous les aspects, il faut d'abord qu'on ait décidé sur les premiers aspects. Et ça, c'est maintenant. Et si nous n'arrivons pas à décider et nous mettre d'accord sur les deux premiers aspects, eh bien, la date limite sera très vite dépassée. Et la date limite, elle est quelque part dans le week-end. Euh, Peut-être qu'il y a une différence entre samedi et dimanche. Samedi, c'est la capacité de tomber sur un accord. Il laisse le temps ensuite au Parlement de délibérer. Dimanche, c'est autre chose. Process, the way in which we're trying to take it forward. I, I'm seriously worried about the future of our common currency. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some people are saying that yeah. we're losing credibility, yeah. perhaps. Some people are saying we're playing ping pong back and forth, perhaps. But the bottom line is that the longer we let this go on, the more people will lose confidence, especially the markets, uh, in our currency. And I don't know how to get out of this one. Uh, I mean, I guess people are talking about two options. One is option A, which is some kind of flexibility on conditionality, uh, perhaps some kind of discussion of a way out from this dilemma. That will probably weaken the credibility of the euro. The other one is a plan B, an exit of one of the members of the eurozone. Now, in the short term and medium term, that would probably cause a lot of political and market turbulence, a lot of turbulence in the European project in general. But some say perhaps in the long term, it would actually strengthen our common currency. And I, I really don't know how we're going to get out of, of this one. But all I'm trying to say is that the longer we prolong this, to take it to the 11th hour on the 30th of June, the worse off, I think, all of us are. Now, on the specifics, and I, I say this as a, as a very strong pro-European, much like Wolfgang. I, I think Wolfgang looked at seven differences and changes from the memorandum of understanding, and I have a tendency to agree with those. I'd probably be a notch, a tiny little notch uh, softer, but saying that I, I simply don't have a mandate to, 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 to make a move especially on the uh, financing uh, side, uh, on early payments from the EFSF. That's just one example. And I think a lot of people are talking about the process of our parliamentary mandates and democratic legitimacy and how much they have suffered, etc., etc. Uh, and, and sometimes the debate seems to be a little bit one-sided, but I agree with all of those, including Hans Jörg and, and Luis, who said, you know, we have to sell this at home. Uh, and, and, and what is on the table now, even from the institutions, might be very difficult to uh, sell at, at home. And that's why I come to my you know, 
question, third point, this is how, how do we take this, this forward from, from here? Because I think it would benefit all of us to, to, to end this as soon as possible. And, and how do you, Gerald, and I, I really don't envy you in this task, how, how do you see this, these next hours panning out? Because we're seriously, seriously running out of time. And we're seriously making, um, I think, yeah, we, 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 the problem is that we, we're not increasing the credibility of the Euro, nor our Euro group as such. And my worry, I'll come back to what I said yesterday. Yeah, I'll, I'll ask the Greeks. Yannis, how do you propose to take this forward? Because you know, I made the question, I posed the question yesterday. Is there a willingness to take this to the Euro Summit at the 11th hour? Basically meaning that the Euro, European Council ends at dinner and then there's another Euro Summit. And then once again we can be tomorrow night or Saturday or Sunday uh, and try to find a solution. But I uh, mean, we really need to... We need to take a decision now. I think patience is running out at all ends. Uh, sorry for putting it. So, Michael? And thanks very much, uh, Iran. I don't have a lot to add to comments made already. I'd like to thank you personally for distributing the documents that we're now working on. Documents are always very important. And when we're all on the same documents and on the same page and on the same sentence, it avoids misunderstanding about what respective positions are. Uh, I welcome the document generated by the Greek government as well, uh, which I got just before the meeting. And uh, it's good to have that on the table. Uh, I wouldn't agree with Yanis to say that a lot of convergence between the two positions, uh, that we are almost at the point of convergence. Uh, on the first reading of the documents, I thought that the two sides were quite far apart on essential issues. And if I could trouble you again, your own, to generate another document, uh, would it be possible for the Secretariat to uh, amalgamate the two documents on a theme by theme, topic by topic basis? and uh, on the sentence by sentence show what the institution position is and what the Greek counter proposal is. And then we'll see very quickly what degree of convergence there is or what degree of separateness in positions there is. A second point I'd like to make is that I don't think the debt sustainability analysis paper heads up. Uh, there's a phrase in it about a three year program financed with concessional financing. I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what that means. And uh, I would like to see uh, that specified. But my, my first uh, advice from staff is that uh, the debt sustainability document needs more work at present, but it's flawed and it doesn't fully add up. And there are concepts included in it that are not in the Irish program every quarter with discussions with the Troika. I was in Brussels when the program for Spain, Portugal and Greece for, for Greece too and Cyprus were put in place. And there's one common factor always before agreement is reached. And that is, the two sides have to trust each other. Now, I think there's very limited trust at the table at present. And uh, I think that there's responsibility on the lead negotiators to see can they build on trust, because without trust, this will not be resolved. And we'll find ourselves on Monday or Tuesday react reacting to events rather than controlling events. And I think we should keep control of it. Final point is, I think there's such a divergence in detail uh, that as a Euro group, we can't be expected to get involved in the negotiating process. Uh, in previous occasions, if it's down to two or three uh, net points that are sticking points, the Euro group can come up with appropriate compromises. But when it's a, such a wide agenda of divergent opinions, it's not for the Euro group to do the detailed technical work. That kind of 
that kind of negotiation <coughs> couldn't possibly. Uh, so again, I, I would reinforce Alex's point uh, and ask for the awareness. How does he see the next three days develop? Does he see another round of negotiations between the Greek authorities and the institutions? Uh, does he see all negotiations parked uh, with some revival of positions uh, at the council meeting? And uh, does he see a further role called the Eurogroup post council meeting or, you know, as, as the lead protagonist here? Uh, how does he see this playing out on, on the limited timeline, which is basically all that is available to us? So, uh, thank you, Your own. I appreciate how difficult your position is. So, as far as I'm concerned, you're, you're doing everything possible to resolve the situation. Thank you very much, Michael. Um, please. Briefly, I would like to join to Alex, Louis, Michael, Antio, and, and, and Wolfgang that I'd like to stress is the credibility. That's the first. Because at the end of that, and at, the, at the end of the day, you know, we just have credibility on the We are friends with this. This is not something about the popularity. This is about credibility. And uh, looking at the metrics, which is uh, pointed, there is no full flexibility of great partners, there is no fresh money, there is no bad movie, and I am on the boat. And frankly, this matter is unresolved. Thanking you and institutions for their hard work and also for the Greek authorities for their part of the uh, Just to share with you thoughts of uh, how I'm reading this meeting. Let me start with the obvious. The risk of stalemate today is larger than yesterday. It's not because of, uh, a day has gone by. But because now we are uh, having a stalemate on a list of measures and not just on taxation. Uh, so, uh, are we moving forward or not? I'd like to, uh, on this, to share Michel's view that some progress has been made, especially if you look backward. And let's not just uh, throw it out the window that some progress has been made. Yet, of course, the distance is still very large. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I, will, I will argue that there is flexibility in, in what... Uh, the institutions have achieved so far and what they are putting on the table. So one issue is, to me, and Peter, maybe if I understood him correctly, alluded to this <coughs> already, uh, maybe we need to know more to what extent the different measures suggested by the institutions on the one side and on the other side, those coming from Greek authorities, translate into behavior. Many have uh, uh, mentioned the fact that figures don't add up. Uh, maybe we should know more. I didn't have the time to uh, study carefully the documents. Apologies for that. But maybe some uh, further analysis. Um, in what sense the figures don't add up would be useful. But this is not the point. My only, only point I want to say is the following, and this is uh, especially directed to Yanis. Uh, I take it as an obvious fact that we cannot discuss the third program while we're still discussing the second. Uh, I think Wolfgang is absolutely right on that. At the same time, uh, I do not agree with the fact that it is almost inevitable, if I understood Yanis correctly, that in six months we'll be here looking at a situation which could possibly be worse than, be worse than the one we're facing now. Uh, how we meet in six months' time depend uh, essentially on what uh, it is done and is achieved in the six months. So my <coughs> point is, uh, let's not waste the opportunity of, uh, of having a time in which 
measures are implemented, and in addition to measures, some trust building exercises are carried out. Again, I, I, I reiterate this point every time I speak. I understand Michael uh, pointed at the fact that we need more trust. I fully agree with that. And to me, trust also is also built up to implementing and believing that we are all going in the, in the same direction. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? No, I guess anyone.
based scenario that is uh, the consequence of the new one and prior, this prior angle. And if even I'm questioning ad memoir and flexibility going too far, <coughs> how far do we go with the proposal of Greekson? This is even further than ad memoir. So I'm questioning again. negotiations from the Greek side, then uh, it is unacceptable to deviate from Edmund one and go even further. So what my conclusion would be, the only thing that we could do today is say to Greece, take it or leave it, Edmund one and action plan that is here. Otherwise, we're really going across any sensible board. Then I will turn back to the institutions because a number of questions have been raised on <coughs> documents, scenarios, <coughs> memoir, many questions uh, to the papers uh, that the three uh, institutions have uh, put before us, which is not a proposal, <coughs> colleagues, I'd just like to stress that point. A proposal would mean that there will be an agreement. It was just to inform you of the state of play. <coughs> Having said that, I think uh, these questions need uh, some answers, so I will turn to the Commission first. It's hard to, to, to answer all the questions uh, in the room. Uh, what I would say is that it's difficult to, to compare the two documents uh, because the corrections are being made on prior uh, version. Say that uh, the document of the <coughs> is not uh, said. The question of my colleagues, uh, the dilution of the memoir is something which composes it, uh, which is quite precise, comprehensive, and uh, well, I think all around it is uh, balanced. No, I would like to, uh, to address the last point that was made uh, concerning the situation. What has changed? How can we move from where we were six months ago when there was return of growth, some primary surplus, and where we are today? And I think it boils down to two key targets that have been missed for reasons that we can analyze. But the first one is uh, the primary surplus which has been much lower than what was expected. But I think there has been significant slippages uh, in terms of revenue collections in particular over the last, not just the last six months, but over the last 12 months, let's face it. The whole period of the election was also uh, not good from a revenue collections point of view, as is often the case in a, uh, an election period. Since that, it has um, worsened and uh, the primary surplus that was expected uh, out of the operations of uh, the group
Greek government and the Greek administrations um, has not delivered what was expected. The general climate of uncertainty caused by where are we, where is it going, what is the situation, what is the position, has certainly not helped in that process. I think the second key uh, shortfall, which explains also why there has been so much slippage, is the privatization. Uh, there was you know, a much higher number that was expected out of privatization. I think it's a constant of the Greek programs for the last five years or so, but it certainly has not improved. And what we, um, we are perceiving is certainly a, a concern by the bidders or by those that would be interested potentially in acquiring this, that or the other, given the uncertainty and the climate that there is at the moment. So one, one of the major issues is certainly uh, that uncertainty, and that has caused uh, the whole um, financing and the situation to actually worsen as a result. Now your point about the, um, the flexibility which uh, many of you have mentioned is, is correct. Uh, we have actually, collectively, the three institutions, we have demonstrated um, a lot of flexibility, not just on the <laughs> targets on which we have uh, agreement with the uh, is this Greek authorities, yes, one, good. two, three, yeah, three and a half. Those targets have eventually what been approved. Like but in yeah. terms of the content, of what will like deliver uh, that, um, <laughs> that, that, that um, those consolidation measures and the ultimate result mm. of surplus. We are not, first of all, let's put it that way, we're not in agreement yet, or maybe we will never be in agreement, I don't know, I hope it's a yet rather than never, uh, with the Greek authorities. We, I think, all have a particular concern which we have expressed, which is that many of those measures are following suit to the old methods that have been applied by the Greek authorities, which consist of taxing, taxing and retaxing. Um, we certainly would have all preferred that it be less growth and friendly and that they be more in terms of uh, cutting spendings than there is on tax revenue generating, well, tax um, and as a revenue generating uh, principle. You will see when, if and when you have time to go through uh, the proposals actually in both documents. We think that it's not particularly growth friendly. Be it as it may, it's even more growth unfriendly in the Greek proposals. Now why we have not come up with a compare, which is you know what uh, lawyers in, in the room would be used to when you have one document and the other document, it's because there has been a very um, long-standing impossibility for whatever reasons on the part of the Greek of Greek party at the table to actually work on the basis of the document. Eventually we came to working on the similar matrix of the document, but the last document was put to us at 11.15 earlier today. So as hard as our teams worked, and I can assure you that they worked the night through two nights ago, last night again, but it was just materially and practically possible to produce that compare between the two versions. I've gone through it myself a little bit, and there are bits and pieces, changes, pretty much everywhere in the documents. So that's, uh, that's where we are. Thank you. Janus, a number of questions were also uh, put to uh, your direction. If yes, thank you, Juren. Let me begin by saying to my Slovenian colleague, that, and also to others, who let it um, sort of created an impression with their intervention that the program was uh, on track until we were elected. Colleagues, the reason why, why we were elected was because the program was off the rails. The only reason. The uh, view that I heard that there was some growth last year is one that I would like very seriously to contest. Nominal GDP never stopped falling. I have told you this a number of times. I'm saying this to you again. We never had growth in 2014. Indeed, every single target was missed, especially the primary number for 2014. 
But let's not look backwards. We have a very serious problem here in our hands. Uh, Christine mentioned that uh, the privatization agenda has not produced the goods. Well, it didn't produce the goods in an economy where asset prices collapsed. And therefore, it was impossible to reach those completely unfathomable targets. Uh, the point about the primary surpluses, yes, there has been flexibility from the institutions. But from what level? From 4.5% primary surplus projections for the, next, for the foreseeable uh, future? I do not know any economist who can testify to having a rationale according to which an economy like the Greek economy, under the circumstances, could maintain for the medium term such a large primary surplus. 3.5% is still very large, but we have accepted it in the spirit of cooperation. Regarding our measures that have been um, repeatedly described as not particularly growth friendly, I have to repeat the point I made before, that when you have these large measures, uh, they are not going to be growth friendly. And I made the point yesterday, I have to make it again, that whether you, it's more growth friendly to reduce very low pensions that have a very high fiscal multiplier or to increase corporate taxes is an empirical matter. I don't have the numbers here for you and I don't think that anybody does. Uh, it's only through trial and error that you work this one out. Um, the point that uh, Pierre Carlo made, which was very important, because if he's right, then I'm very happy. If I correctly understand, Pierre Carlo, you said that you disagreed that with me that if we have an extension for six months or so, uh, eight months, nine months, whatever, then without a new um, approach to our debt repayment schedule, without any creative public finance, I, my prognostication was that in a few months' time we will be back to where we are now because the animal spirits will not come back on, because there will be no growth spurt, because, they will, because all investors, rational investors, will be thinking ahead to the next negotiation, waiting for what happens at the end of it. Pierre Carlo disagreed. He thought that this is not necessarily so. I hope you're right. But I noticed, colleagues, that at least five of those who spoke expressed either um, an inability to push through their parliament and through their polity the institution's own proposals. Or they, they said that the, pro the proposals that are on the table, whether it's ours or the institution's, do not offer a viable solution. Now this is a very serious political problem and it speaks to what Michel was saying before, that we have a political duty to come up with an outcome which is sustainable. And I do believe that this is always something that the Eurogroup wants to do and wants to include at the end of every statement, every communique, that the country, the program country that we are discussing is going to, will have insight market access. This was the point we were raising. The reason why we are, um, at, at, uh, um, we haven't agreed yet is because, firstly, we ask for more flexibility, not in terms of the fiscal numbers, but in terms of measures within those fiscal numbers. And secondly, because we can't see how this very large package can be pushed through all our parliaments when there is no prospect for more than a few months of an extension. So I come to the conclusion, to the, conclusion, to the question that Alexander, amongst others, asked, so what do we want to do from now on? What do we foresee as the next few steps? Well, let me, let, me, let me say that we are, very much like you, at a loss. We hope that there are steps we can all take. We are constrained like you by our own parliaments. I cannot go to my parliament and table prior actions like you can't, like you can't, Wolfgang. We cannot push through our parliaments a set of prior actions without being able to answer the question, is this sustainable? My con great concern as a European, not as a Greek at this very moment, is that 
And again, I'm alluding to something Alexander said about the kind of governance that we have, that this is a major concern for the way we're running Europe, the way we're running our monetary union. We should not be in a position where we throw up our, our hands up in the air and we declare that we don't know how to move ahead. We all have the same interests. We all have a common purpose to bring this to fruition. We should find a way of doing it. I was hoping that today we would be able to come to this agreement. Alexander, I genuinely didn't want this to go to the summit tonight or to any other forum. Let us just resolve to make an example out of ourselves so that we can find a way of taking to our parliaments a set of prior actions that will go through the, the, the Greek parliament that is sustainable and which you can sell to our own people, not just to our members of parliament, honestly and in faith within ourselves that it is truly sustainable. Thank you.
practically speaking, that would also mean another extension to get it done, to disperse, etc. The extension can only be limited given the amount of money still available in the current program. On that basis, and if that approach is successful, and is successful in the coming months, because the program gets back on track, and in the end will lead to a positive uh, final review, we could, in the fall, return to the question, how do we move forward? Uh, and I would not like to exclude that if the program is back on track, and Greece has implemented <laughs> conscientiously, would not like to exclude at this point that we uh, look for further support or ways to help Greece in the future. Is, of course, the the of the 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 that is the thing, the way I think we could approach this issue. But of course we can only come to that debate uh, if there is a first on how to finalize this program. We've always said this, first we need an agreement on what needs to be done, then it needs to be implemented, successful final review, and then we are in a new phase in which hopefully trust has also returned a little, and we can talk about the future, the sustainability, further financial support where needed, etc. It's too early now. So that will be my sequencing. Anyway, returning to where we are now, we need an agreement, and many of you have still uh, underlined and stressed mm -hmm. the importance of an agreement. We need an agreement on how to finish the current program in a credible way. Um, so what I think we should do is ask the institutions if they are prepared to work with the Greeks on new proposals, but they would have to stay in current lines and not deviate further. Let's negotiate mainly within the lines. You can negotiate within the lines. It's clear that we cannot go any further than that today. We cannot draw any conclusions either way, I would say. So the question to the institutions and the uh, authorities would be if they were prepared to uh, work further. But once again, within the lines uh, of uh, the documents, targets uh, and the goals of the documents that the institutions have presented. He's so making us an overall kind of Yeah. Hmm? Of course. <coughs> Ready to, to work with the a compare uh, would, be, would be certainly something we can do. What I just wonder is, what is the point? What is the point? Are we going to, are we going to make progress? That's what I'm, I'm just curious about. You know, we have what has been called the Ed Memoir, which is the staff level agreement, which is, as some of you have said, the extent of the flexibility. Some of, them have, some of you have said it's too much. So how are we going to make progress is what I want to know. I think the question is really to our Greek colleagues. Where do you move towards what has been put together? And you know, if I'm to judge just a very quick compare, there's been more backtracking, some changes and movement forward, but a lot of backtracking. So where do we go? I want to go to Yanis first. I think that's the logic order. We are all in this room hoping for an agreement, as I said, but we all have constraints in terms of our mandates. All colleagues do. We do not have a mandate to um, accept the backtracking that we have noticed from the institutions. For instance, for days now, the institutions have been uh, pressurizing us to accept that, this is just an example, that catering and restaurants should go up from 13% to 23% of uh, um, VAT, the VAT range. And when we, in, 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 a, in the spirit of cooperation, we said yes last night, uh, 
we were told that this would not yield the improvement in revenues that the, uh, the model we had commonly worked on and we had agreed would be the common basis delivered. So we see a lot of backtracking, Christine, true, from the side of the institutions. Let me give you another example. We are a country that is relying so heavily on tourism. Yes, I'm going to interrupt you. Though. Well, let me just let me just complete my let me Jeroen, you know, let me com please co allow me to complete my sentence, and I will be very brief. We rely ex we well, I'm going to give you an example of uh, inflexibility that our colleagues should know. We you all know the extent to which we rely on tourism. There is a demand by the institutions that we take hotels to 23% of VAT, when on the opposite coast, a mile, a nautical mile away in Turkey, it's 7%. <laughs> now, I do not have the mandate to simply say that for the purposes of achieving an agreement now, I will sign up to this dotted line. This is another example of inflexibility. There is a great deal of this. This is how the Greek side sees it, and I think that you should know it. Maybe we are wrong. Maybe the institutions are right or vice versa. On the question of what, how do we take it from here, just like Pierre, just like Christine, just like Mario, of course we're willing and ready to continue work. But when, Jeroen, you say that we have to work within the lines, I, I need to ask you to tell me what exactly what this means. That this means that either we accept the document of the institutions or else. Is it what one of the colleagues said, that it's a take it or leave it? because I just need to convey this to my government. I asked the institutions the questions. Would they be willing and prepared to work further with you? We don't do the negotiations in the Eurogroup. Mm -hmm. I don't do the negotiations. They have been trying to reach an agreement with you. The colleagues here have said on the basis <coughs> that the institutions have so far <coughs> together put on the table. This is already maybe too much already deviating from where we set out the framework of the 20th government. <coughs> Nonetheless, the Commission, the ECB, have said, and, and, and Christine in principle said, of course we are going to work. But Christine has raised the question, how are we going to get there if you just keep putting in new proposals that take away fiscal space, that uh, take away the urgency from structural reforms, that uh, shift the balance even more towards taxes and less uh, to revenue cuts. That is the problem. And that's the circle we've been going through now for a long time. So once again, uh, what, how much room do you see to reach an agreement? Because that's basically the question. Well, I think that the only remedy for this agreement is further conversation. I know no other remedy. On the questions that you raised, I think that they are up for uh, further deliberation. We don't believe that we are asking for fiscal space. We have agreed on the fiscal numbers. Our proposals about reform simply are different to the institutions. We believe that our reforms are uh, more efficient reforms. We may be wrong. But it's not a question that we do not want reforms or we want to do backtracking on reforms. We do not believe that simply cutting pensions is a reform. It's a cutback. Maybe we should have it. But it, we do not think that this is going to solve the problem of reforming the pension system. But as I said, discussions, further work. I have to repeat myself. Please have, have in mind that this portal uh, of the institution is not accepted by the Europe. Mm -hmm. Since we have to accept it, and without fresh money, without discussing a new problem. Much 
not measures which be a little hard, a little bit gross, a little bit gross, what we get to do, which is not just for the same. The problem is in any way only against growth. <coughs> if we want even to pass away for the next month, the sheer extension is now financing, new financing, then we must rely on more growth. If not, we know that it is not, we will not build confidence, we will do the opposite. We destroy any confidence in all of us, including the future. But this is not, uh, not sustainable. But without new financing, it's not sustainable. And we will see it even in terms of the because Greece has to replace the IMF now. If I got it right from this team, and nobody has an answer where we get the money from. Θα διαρρεύσουν όλα αυτά. Όχι όλοι όμω. Όλοι. Άλλο διαρρεύσουν και να το πει εσύ. Δεν έχει σημασία. Είναι πολύ μεγάλο weapon αυτό που έχουν. Δεν το χρησιμοποιεί. Όχι αυτό που είπε εσύ, δεν το πω. Έχουν δύο documents. Έχουν δύο documents και υπήρχε. 
descent και για αυτό το μυστικό Αν το γύρω θα το πω. Αλλά gently. Gently μετά θα πρέπει να το κάνουμε την επίθεση. Thank you, Jeram. Uh, I am a little bit confused. Uh, uh, perhaps it's my personal fault. Uh, but, uh, uh, well, I appreciate very much the wholehearted effort that uh, the institutions and the Greek government are doing, no? But uh, the main conclusion that I can draw is that we are very far away. I don't know whether dedicating more time, taking into consideration the political, uh, uh, economic, financial red lines, we are going to converge. And my point goes uh, to, uh, you know, an event that is going to take place in two hours' time. Is our voices are going to gather. You know, we have a European Council going on. And, uh, you know, uh, my, my boss is going to ask me, uh, what's the conclusion from the Eurogroup? What's the situation about that? Well, I don't know what to reply because now, now I do not know whether the main reference is going to be the Etnoir <coughs> or the name of you in order to continue the discussions with, uh, with, uh, with the Greek government. I don't know whether, you know, the, 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 the document from the three institutions is going to be, you know, the basis for uh, the, the future agreement or the name of you. Uh, I don't know what's our reference now. I don't know. So, you know, perhaps uh, it could be wiser, it could be more rapid, you know, to say to our, to, to, to European Council that, uh, you know, an agreement is extremely difficult to be reached and to receive some political guidance. Because otherwise, I don't know how we are going to break this stalemate situation. Yes, maybe I can clarify what uh, Antio Schelling asked. The age of that buffer will expire on the 30th of June if no action is taken. If you, you then unanimously decide to extend the availability period, this can happen. And I guess you will do that if you also extend the um, current program. These are two different legal acts, but I think they go hand in hand. If the availability period is extended, then you could decide immediately or later on to use part of that money not for tax recapitalization but for other purposes. Again, unanimous decision um, would have to be coordinated with the SSM because some of the money will be needed for free banks, I assume, but perhaps not all of it. Um, so these are the different steps. But it's not possible what we discussed yesterday at one point that the EFSF or the ESM in a new program gives money directly um, to the ECB to retire the S&P bonds um, that are, um, at the ECB. Thank you. Uh, Alex? Okay. So what do we do? Thank you very much, Jerome. I was listening to both Don Hans-Jörg and, and, and Louis, and, and Louis was a little bit confused, me too, but let, let me try to I mean, as a rookie, I'll, I'll try to simplify grossly the way in which I see it. Um, there is a group of Euro countries that have a clear parliamentary mandate which is based on the MOU. That's probably 18 of us. Mm -hmm. Then there is one Euro country which sort of had a mandate for that, but not really. Then the institutions were asked to negotiate with Greece a new document, uh, which uh, is called a Ed Memoir, which doesn't really exist because it hasn't been proposed. And now we have a discussion on the Ed Memoir and a possible Greek proposal. 
Now, there was talk about this being a take it or leave it agreement. And I would have a tendency to agree with that. There's been strong talk about trust and how to take this forward. And may I, Janis, put forward a proposal? For Wolfgang, I'm taking an extreme. The Ed Memoir and the document of the institutions go too far. For you, it doesn't go far enough. The IMF and others have asked you to make sure that you can push it through. My suggestion would be that you take the Ed Memoir and a strong set of prior actions to your parliament this weekend. If it passes, we'll continue to negotiate. If it doesn't pass, that's the end of the road. Because we have a mandate for the memorandum of understanding, but we need to be sure that you'll be able to push through an Ed Memoir. And right now, I sense in the room that it just simply ain't going to happen. So we need to be sure, because otherwise it's going to be impossible for us to take the memoir in to the bar. So I would fall into the category of saying, at least from my perspective, we are pretty much in the take care of or leave it situation, but you need to clear that with your parliament first. Sorry for, this is perhaps rookie bluntness or unclarity, but that's how I see it. Let me make a couple of points on the process also in uh, response to Luis's remarks. The starting point for us was, you can read it in the February 20th statement, uh, the old program, the old MOU. But we allowed uh, on two grounds some flexibility for the institutions to work out a new agreement. Once again, for which the old MOU was the basis. First, kind of flexibility was that the institutions, particularly the Commission, could take into account the new economic reality set back in the economy that could lead to an adjustment of the fiscal time as a The second kind of flexibility was new measures could be put into the program because there is a new government, but in the end it still has to make sense. It has to add up fiscally, it needs to bring back the economy on track, and it needs to stabilize the financial sector. Those were the three cornerstones. On that basis, the institutions have worked jointly, uh, and where they are, they have put just to inform us in documents of today. These have so far not been acceptable for the Greeks. Now, uh, Alex is making a good point in the sense that how can we go to our parliaments if we don't even know if it's going to be accepted uh, in Greece? So in any case, the order in my mind would be that the Greeks go to their parliament first, and get hopefully a very broad uh, endorsement of the package. Uh, and then, the time is very limited after the weekend, uh, we could go, as far as that's required, to our parliaments. So that is the right order. There's one thing that I would like to disagree with, uh, Alex, is saying we could get an endorsement from parliament, and then we could continue to negotiate. I don't think that will work. Uh, so there needs to be uh, an agreement and if you want uh, a, a take it or leave it approach, that's also possible. You can simply say yes. That is also an option, mm -hmm. uh, seriously, because we are coming to the end of our time, uh, our creativity, our options. Um, but if you have uh, last proposals that are feasible, that will strengthen the credibility, and I've not seen them, but strengthen the credibility, then there is little time left, and that's why I asked the institutions if they would still be prepared to look at that. Um, I'm going to uh, adjourn for, let's say, 10 minutes to talk to the institutions uh, on what options we see uh, to move forward in this process. Just 10 minutes. <laughs> Μόνοι να ξέρουν ότι έχω ατζέρνει και να σας πω ότι θα βάλω το δεύτερο. Πώς δεν χρειάζεται.